Today's park spotlight is not only a mega park, but it is also a one of a kind nature park utilizing the Adventure DLC pack like never seen before. A mix of Mediterranean villages, lost ancient civilizations with beautiful gardens, and the wildlands that are fully explorable with the use of massive coasters and transport rides. I've never quite been so captivated by an adventure park like this before, and I think we are in for a real treat today. So buckle up up ladies and gentlemen and get ready to explore the fire island mega park with me here in today's episode of park spotlight once a park spotlight an innocent kitten falls from one of your kitty coasters because of your non-stop persistent park spotlight features every week a couple kittens fall to their impending doom I have been working tirelessly to put a stop to FTPK Pandemic. And even with the smallest amount of support through Patreon or YouTube Join Plus, you can fund me to develop a better coaster train harness on Kitty Coasters and prevent FTPK incidents. So please, click the Join button next to subscribe or the Patreon link down in the description below. And by doing so today, you can save another kitten tomorrow. Ayo, my Planet Coaster friends, Johnny5 Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Park Spotlight. As mentioned in today's episode, we're gonna be looking at Fire Islands Resort and Nature Park created by Teroscon, also known as Jason Billingsley on Steam. And on their Steam page, they say, Fire Island Resort and Nature Park is the first creation of a naturalist and landscape designer, Jason Teroskin. Billingsley. Located in a previously unexplored part of the Cascade Mountains of Washington State, the park is situated in an active volcanic caldera. The extensive geothermal activity keeps the air, water, and soil warm in what would otherwise be a chilly mountain environment. These warm temperatures allowed for the creation of a tropical paradise filled with a rich tapestry of plant and animal life. If that weren't enough, a world-class resort and theme park was built so the visitors could enjoy the wonder of the beautiful place. Fire Island Resort is home to three themed areas, plus other secrets you'll have to discover for yourself. Here is a description of the three main areas. We have the village. Based on the lakeside Mediterranean village, this area is a wonderful place to stay and relax. You'll find great entertainment, shopping, and food, plus amazing rides for the thrill seekers. Be sure to stay a few nights at the Island Inn, which sits at the base of the Fire Island volcano, the Lost City. Inspired by ancient civilizations around the world, the Lost City is a real gem at the heart of the park. The ancient city is adorned with beautiful gardens and is home to some of the most intense rides you'll ever experience. It is truly an incredible place. The Wildlands. The Wildlands is filled with so much life that you might feel like you've been transported to the middle of one of your world's great tropical rainforests. This rustic area celebrates the beauty of the natural world and is home to the rides that show off unique environments around the Fire Island volcano. Enjoy your visit at Fire Island Resort and Nature Park and be sure to invite your friends to come share in the adventure. Boom! There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, quite the introduction there. I'm excited to dive in and take a closer look, so why don't we do just that? Boom, bam, 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 bam. Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Fire Resort. Park information... We have some camera effects, and I'm actually just fine with them. Makes it feel a little bit more warm, a little hotter. It's quite cool, actually. Uh, pretty rare to see, like, the uh, camera effects being modified by the creator. But I like it. Fire Island Resort and Nature Park. So we have uh, options here. We can go straight to the Lost City. The Village. Oh, it says start here. <laughs> Why give me options if you're telling me which one to take? All right, all right, all right. We'll start with the village. That's kind of where I wanted to start anyways, because it looks so captivating. Uh, coming through this tunnel here, it was uh, a quite nice shot. You guys probably saw it in the B-roll there. Look at all this. Yeah, I really feel like the uh, adventure pack has been taken to the next level. I think the 
camera effects that were added to this, plus a little bit of reshade, has really taken it to the next uh, level here. So, but I can't take anything away from the creator. They're the ones who put all this foliage down, hand placed every single bit of nature, and I think you created quite a composition and landscape. It's really phenomenal. Super intriguing, out of the ordinary, extraordinary theme park adventure here today. They got crocodile hats. Nice and fitting. Ah, the Mediterranean village is really well done as well. Beautiful builds. Got the uh, shops, bathrooms, and all that integrated into all of these buildings. Some churros. All really well themed. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Mmm, it is definitely warm out here. Could use some of that ice cream. <laughs> Look how bright it is. I love it. Gonna have to take the boat to her around the park at some point here. Nice vista point. Ooh! I love a good wooden coaster. Let's go! <laughs> All right, well, let's let's head back into the village. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. As I was editing, I realized I flew by this sign. So I want to clip this into the video here rather than not having it at all. Here we go. See what uh, if there's anything up on the pier here. Well, this is a bridge taking us what to the other side where all the coasters are and stuff. Let me just double check that I. Uh, it's a Mexican food and souvenirs. And then I'm assuming this goes to the Lost City, and then that goes to was it the Wildlands? Mm -mm -mm. This is fantastic. All right, let's cross the bridge and ride a coaster or something. It was up here, right? Sort of. They're excited. I'm excited. Are you guys excited? Woo! So it looks like there's a coaster and a train ride. Mm -mm. I did not get a coaster count for this park. But we will uh, find out as we go. There's definitely at least two. Very hot. Island Inn and the Molten Core. Didn't they say something about being able to watch the, the volcano um, activity from inside the hotel? Well, wait, the train goes through the hotel? That's, that's different. Certainly different. Um, great, great job putting speakers everywhere in your park. The ambience really helps a lot. As soon as I say that, it all <laughs> goes quiet. <laughs> uh, molten core. What is this? In just moments, you will explore the active magma chambers under the Fire Island volcano. Ooh. All right. Burm, burm. Oh. I thought I saw a wooden coaster, unless I've been mistaken. Either there's a wooden coaster and a mine train coaster and a train ride, or uh, there's a mix of all of it. I hope there's a mix of all of it because uh, that would make for an exciting adventure. So here we have is the Canyon Runner mine train coaster. It's great across the board. Let's look at all the stats there. It's a thousand meters in length. Um, yeah, you can take a look at them. I want to get on this before it takes off here. Uh, I think for this one, we kind of have to ride the back of the train so we can see a little bit. So we're going to we're going to do the whole look forward thing. There we go. And off we go. I saw the sign, it said track or chase. This is close enough to chase, okay?
fantastic! My goodness! Oh, and oddly enough, I usually don't comment on this, but this freaky playground music from Planet Coaster was a perfect choice. It had that intensity. It lined up perfectly. And, and that was a saying that to some people where they forget to put music on their coasters and whatnot. Um, it can really make a difference, especially if you get the right choice. So we still definitely have well, like a wooden coaster and a train because I was seeing all that on the outside. For whatever reason, I expected this to go outside and around the mountain. I guess that's why I was a little bit surprised when we came up here to find that we had a train ride because uh, I didn't see it from the outside. So this was like purely meant to be like a, a dark ride lava experience, which I didn't really expect Ex expect other than the fact that they started to mention it while we were reading the description so i thought there would be something but i did not expect that and that was done to exceptional quality as well had a good length to it we got to explore a lot of the different magma caves so yeah that was that was absolutely amazing really well done wow we're kicking things off with a bang and that's all a part of like the hotel so if you stay in the hotel you have a coaster right in your back in the back of your room that's really cool. Island Inn and Molten Core. That's amazing. Maybe the one thing you could have added in somewhere in the island resort is a hot springs. You know, just chill in the pool in the back where uh, you have some hot springs. That would have been neat. Neat little touch. Polynesian food. All right, well, let's continue on down here because we definitely have more rides to check out. The Island Lounge. <laughs> Food, drinks, live music, and friends, all are welcome. <laughs> nice. Was that, was that coaster train empty? I didn't see any guests on it. How many guests are in the park? Only 500, and our frame rate is pretty good. Can we, can we go ahead and let, like, at least 500 more guests in. I want to see more people, you know, out and about. It'll take a sec for them to all pour in, but I think it's worth it. When you have good frame rates like we do in today's park, I definitely think you could bring in one to 2,000 guests um, quite easily, especially considered how, how, how many uh, park spotlights we do. Mountainside Monster. How many park spotlights we do where the frame rate is, like, literally dead? <laughs> When we're getting like 30, it's like, hey, this is a dream come true right here. Yeah, 30 is 30 is a nice place to be. I mean, we grew up on games that are like between 15 to 30, 15 to 30 FPS at best with the uh, most N64 games. Well, at least I did. I don't know about half of you guys, but I think my average audience viewership is in their 30s. They're between 20 to 40 is the average viewership. So I'm assuming most of you guys had an N64 as well. So we're all good with the uh, the 30 to 40 FPS. All right, we have the mountainside monster here. Anything that stands out here, five airtime counts, 55 miles per hour. That's all the stats there. If you want to see them, I'll cut to it when it's ready. Now they say here, look forward is what they want. But then you got the heads of the people here when we could just sit in seat view. But I guess they want to avoid the flailing arms. This is also technically look forward. And there's less flailers in front of us. Maybe maybe I could go up a few seats. Something like that. Let's try that. It is look forward. That went a little bit quicker than I expected. I wonder if there's any nighttime lighting on this ride. They did say 10 a.m. Seems to be. I think we could try this again with a different perspective.
boom, there it is. I'm, I'm gonna be brutally honest with this one. I was expecting a little bit more of an adventure. We work our way up that lift and another lift, and then it drops us down just so that we can go up another lift. And then it finally releases us and we kind of just drop back down into the station. And we're coming back into the station with still quite a lot of momentum. So I definitely think you could have figured out the ebb and flow of the coaster momentum just a little bit better, stretched it out just a little bit longer. Um, I think it, instead of adding this second lift here, maybe could have just wrapped it around a few times, done a couple helixes or something like that. It had almost enough momentum to get to the top of this coaster, or to the top of this lift. So I think if you would have ran it around a, a helix or whatnot, still would have had enough speed to get around back into the station. So I think just that uh, double lift there should have been, should have been enough. Um, if you're going to go add in another big lift here at some point, uh, do it when the coaster has no momentum, run it dry a little bit, run it around here a bit more, and then build up a big lift and take us through the outbacks just a little bit further so we can really get that coaster length. For me, I would have liked to explore a little bit more on that wooden coaster. Not too bad though. Let's uh, keep pressing along. We have a train ride over there. Yeah, we could check out the train ride. Why not? It's coming in right now anyways. The Fire Island Railway. Keep forgetting about my reshade. My goodness. Meep, meep. Yeah, full of guests here. I'm never really sure how I want to ride these. I got to make sure I'm on the right station at the very least, and I am not. I'm thinking track view is going to be the best. Let's uh, let's go for a little scenic ride. Wow, a thoroughly entertaining train ride experience. Definitely got some beautiful views on both left and right side. Here we are passing through the uh, 
the hotel here, the inn. That is amazing. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I think that's a solid train ride. We got some height in there, crossing over some amazing bridges, canyons, uh, creating some great vistas of those jungle areas and lakes. Really amazing. Crossing in and over coaster tracks. Just a lot to look at. Visually, an incredible train ride experience, absolutely. And it looked like there was only one other station stop, which was the completely other side of the park. So you, you definitely get to soak up the journey between stations. Yeah, two stations on this coaster or this train ride here. All right. Well, rather than getting off at the next station, I want to go on foot so that we can soak up more of this island resort. A little swimming area. That's cool. Some very neat and decorative lanterns. The Great Wheel. Fire Island. Lots of uh, volcanic activity throughout the park here. And there's the, uh, the Great Wheel. Alright. Now the village is starting to take uh, a bit of a change here in art style. As you can see here. We're getting more into the wildlands. And uh, still ser serving French baguettes in the wildlands here. The Summit Skyway. Wait, what is the Skyway? Oh. We can check this out. So we have chairlifts that take us to the top of the mountain. What is at the top of the mountain? We're going to go two times speed on this. We're gonna get some nice views of the jungle below. Really nice. See, I was talking in a previous episode, um... Like a week ago, we did a massive park spotlight with gondolas, and the gondolas were drooping and sagging across the canyon. And, uh, I was, I was asking, because i never seen that, and here we go, we have another gondola, and it doesn't have that droop effect that I was seeing in that last episode by Beartastic, so it's definitely possible if you stretch it out and manipulate it, but I thought it was a really cool effect I had never seen. So here we are at the top. Let's see what's at the top here. So we get off here. Some amazing vistas. Holy good googly moogly. See, this coaster appears to have a bit more length, or maybe... No, I thought that was this coaster. So we definitely have at least two more coasters to ride, which is great, and from the looks of it, a boat ride as well. You get hot dogs up in the sky. Beautiful. Now, does are we just walking down now? Like, do we go all the way up for a hot dog? That doesn't seem fair. I would have put, like, maybe, like, a, a drop tower at the top of the... Like, a ride or something. Oh, we're still on two times speed. Magma chamber viewpoint. Ah, this better be worth the walk. Lava flow. What? What? Oh, neat. <laughs> we're a little flat ride down here. I thought we were going to go on a dark ride, but then that works. <laughs> All right, so if you want a nice view of the lava and the coaster that goes by, you can come all the way down here to get your photos, get your vista. Yeah, maybe maybe um, having the queue for that coaster down here. Well, I guess you had it in the inn, which also worked. Feels It feels like it wasn't worth the walk because I've already been down here when I was on that coaster, right? And it was a much more exhilarating experience than walking 17,000 stairs. <laughs> that is quite the exercise. Well, we did it. We checked it out. So yeah, we went to the top of the uh, sky lift just to come back down. I don't know. I guess it's better to walk up and ride down. Or just ride up and ride down. This is neat. I don't know what we're looking at, but it's cool. See, this should have been up there. Absolutely. Then you would have gotten a beautiful shot 
of the entire park from up there. No ride being up there is, is a little disappointing. The Lotus, and that would be for the drop tower. Well, it's at the top. Can we check it out? It goes about halfway to the top. Well, we're going to kind of work our way back to the Lost Village because, yeah, we took the chairlift and skipped some stuff. So I want to at least kind of uh, backtrack a little bit and uh, see what other things are in store for us in that village. No secret tunnels or anything like that. There's the train there, and this bridge should take us back. Wow, what a, what a detour, what a journey that uh, chair left took us on. I regret everything. All right. Boat ride over here. The island tours, which is probably, I would assume, the boat ride, right? Is this the queue? Am I? Yeah. Oh, wow. Very interesting. Okay. We have made it to the uh, island tours. It's a front bumper 10 a.m. ride like everything else in this park. Here we go. And we are arriving back. Wow. <clears throat> Between the train ride and this boat ride, 
you really get to capture and soak up all the beauty that is in this park. And you have some really good compositions, some really great viewpoints. I absolutely love it. It's amazing. Yeah, really well done. I really like this uh, village up here in particular. This looks really neat. I love this composition. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on over there. And we are coming up on that, so we'll go check that out. The Forest Flyer, nice little flat ride tucked in back here. Looks like we can go back into the cave system from here. Um, is this a water cascade coaster? Surprise, surprise. Lots of hidden surprises in this park. The Cavern Crasher, yes, please. Experience the unique natural caves and tunnels created by the Fire Island Volcano. And that is the Water Cascade. Well, here we go. Let's check it out. Uh, ride stats, if you'd like to see them, are right here. We're going to hop on and it says... Look forward automatic. Oh, wow. I really like the fact that uh, we got to explore more of the caverns that weren't so volcanic and a little bit cooler in temperature with some more overgrown nature. And then we did get a little bit of a lot volcanic, but it wasn't all volcanic. And I, I definitely like the contrast to that, considering we already been down there for viewpoints. We already been down there on another coaster. So 
having this cascade do something a little bit different created for a bit more variety and i definitely appreciate the direction that you went with that dark ride definitely awesome all right so i think we hit everything on this side we definitely came up this way so we might as well cross over here and see what's going on down here all right let's keep things moving along and uh, here we are, more of a temple area. And I was going to say, I had a thought cross my mind while we were on that bow ride that a lot of the time with the Adventure DLC packs, we see majority just temples everywhere. And that can oftentimes feel a little repetitive. And the, the choices that you've decided to go with these really cool, almost like futuristic, but you're calling them ancient technology, um, the Mediterranean, the shanty village there. I've really liked that direction and that variety as well. Um, having a little bit of that temple over here at the... Oh, well, we've been on the railway, so we don't need to go here. This is the second station for the train. Yeah, but you have a little bit here, but it's just a little bit. It's exactly that. It looks like it's just the stations for both the railway and appears to be a coaster of some sort. Um, and that's it. So it's, it's not overkill. It's not over done to a point where it's just temple, 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 temple. And I definitely, definitely appreciate that. We got some massive coaster arches crossing over the river here. I like this back area. It seems very neat. The Lost City Looper plus the Jungle Jumper. Wait, so we're getting either a flat ride and a coaster or two coasters. Let's see what the Jumper is. I'm feeling like it's a flat ride. Nope. It is, in fact, a coaster. So we might have a double coaster feature here. It's a giga coaster, green across the board, but it's only a thousand meters in length for a giga coaster. So it's not that giga, but that's okay with me. What do we have for ride perspectives here? Chase view is what they want. All right. Definitely not hitting max speeds on that giga coaster. Only 50 miles per hour. A little bit more of a jungle tour than anything else. Uh, but that's quite all right. We have another coaster just on the other side. We're actually going to go up the other way because it makes sense to do that. And then we can go straight down to the Lost City Looper. And what is this? Is this also a coaster? There's the exit to what appears to be a gas lower, or in Planko terms, a Barg Hest. So here we go. It's the Barg Hest. It's green across the board. Four inversions, a little bit of airtime. All really cool stuff. Seat two. Go in seat view for once. Let's check it out. noticed at the last second they wanted me to change the time of day for this one which was interesting 
We'll go back to 10 a.m. here. I think a little bit more interesting coaster elements on this one out of all the coasters so far. They all do feel to be a little bit short considering how much of a jungle, uh, how much space you have in this park. Uh, I, I do feel the coasters are selling themselves a little bit on the short side um, considering how expansive all of this terrain is. Um, I would like to see them ex expand outward a little bit more. That's just me though. Usually when we see these mega parks, we get coasters that are two, three thousand meters and maybe I'm just a little bit spoiled by now. <laughs> My expectations for coasters have, ex you know, grown a little bit more over the years. So when, when we're getting these like short 600 meter coasters, one after another after another, I guess for me, um, it's left me wanting a little bit more, especially considering how much we've walked around the park. The uh, real long winners in this episode tend to be the transport rides, which I'm fine with. Uh, I thought the boat ride and the train ride were both really well done with tons to look at. Um, I, I wish we had that sort of same jaw awe-inspiring experience that took us through all aspects of the jungle, but on a coaster instead. That's kind of what I was hoping for. But you can't always, uh, you can't always get spoiled with the coaster experiences. Nice view there of the Mediterranean village. Uh, lots of uh, really well themed flat rides as well. And here we are. We are approaching back at the island tour. We've made it all the way around the park. Definitely a different experience than what we're used to with these mega parks and park spotlights and a refreshing one at that. Um, I definitely loved, I think my favorite aspect of the whole park was the inn, going into the inn and then getting that coaster going through the inn and then we get to go experience the molten core. The, the music of that coaster fit really, really, really well with the ambience of it. It was action packed. It had a lot more length and design going on than the other coasters and then the next best part for me would have been the transport rides particularly I like the train ride more than the boat ride the boat ride had some neat elements but the train uh, because it has that ability to go up and down it had that height and variation where we went between over the water to across the jungle underneath coaster tracks and I think the way everything looks and appears with the you know the wooden coaster weaving in and around all of this stuff um these coasters in the back mixed in with all this uh Aztec architecture and it all looks really really nice it creates amazing compositions I loved the foot um, experience walking through all the way around the outside of the park like that and seeing how you can change the environment of the jungle and uh, create di different atmospheres and different vibes throughout the experience um, definitely really really cool the little things that I, I pointed out like going to the top of this mountain for nothing <laughs> maybe a, like a dive coaster up here would have been really cool cool um extending some of the, like the giga coaster should have extended in my opinion all the way out here you have all this back area we could have uh gone around there a little bit stretch back through these mountains and all the way back i would have liked to see that giga coaster be an actual giga and i already made my comments about the wooden coaster as well because they look like they're going to be really fun adventurous uh, exploration type coaster experiences and then they're really short by the time you get going they're already over you know i was kind of hoping for a little bit more with these coaster experiences it's not trying to take anything away from what the creator has done here. I thought this was an amazing park spotlight, very unique and everything, but there's always something to improve on. And for me, that would be the coasters in this case. But as mentioned, I really, really thoroughly enjoyed that um, Molten Core coaster. I thought that was a great experience and it probably just so happened to be your longest one, just over a thousand meters or almost at a thousand meters there. I thought that one was really, really well done. Boom, what did you guys think? What a unique and interesting creation here. Throw your comments down below. What did you think of the creator? Fire Island Resort and Nature Park. I thought it was really fun and refreshing. A unique take on mega parks and a unique atmosphere. Absolutely amazing spotlight here today. Want to give an extended shout out to the creator as they are a Patreon supporter. Thank you so much for your support. If you guys want to support the show, you like the content and all that stuff, please do check out the Patreon program. Links are down in the description below. If you'd like to download and rate this park for yourself, links for this are also in the description. Boom. And that's going to do it for this episode of Park Spotlight. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.